Now it's time to do our first poly waffle for 2011 with our poly waffle team, our politicians from Canberra. Let me introduce them from left to right. We've got Senator Matthias Cormann, who is a Liberal for Western Australia. Good to be here. For the first time, we've got uh, Senator Louise Pratt, who's a Labor Senator for Western Australia. Thank you very much for being G'day. here. And of course, an old friend of ours here, Ken White, who is the Federal Member for Haslack, and he also happens to be a Liberal as well. Welcome back. No, thanks very much, Fred. It's great to be back. There you go. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Today, guys, we're going to talk about what's happening in politics and some of the topics, and I know we're probably going to get a little heated when we talk about the carbon tax, or the ETS, as it's known now. I thought we might let Louise start the discussion. Louise, what's happening with the carbon tax? Well, the Climate Change Committee is making really good progress and we're really looking forward to some announcements in the near future. Uh, we're putting 100% effort into locking down a deal that will see um, polluters pay, big polluters pay, uh, industry assistance and transition, but most importantly, assistance for households to cope with the price changes. How do you think the Labor Party and the Labor government handled the, the whole carbon tax? I'm asking a personal one here. Do you think it's been handled well? Because out there in the public where you go every day, what are the public saying to you? Well, there's no doubt that it's been a difficult <laughs> debate, but by and large the public uh, want action on climate change. Uh, people I talk to day to day are really passionate about this issue. Uh, it's I suppose um, difficult debates not helped by the opposition, I suppose, in their strong campaign against it does make people feel nervous about it. But we know that um, it's in the national interest, it's in our economy's interest and it's in the interest of our environment that we move forward on this question. All right, Senator Matthias Cormann, what do you think about that? <coughs> well, I mean, Louise, the, the businesses that uh, Louise calls big polluters, they, they're the ones generating our electricity, and of course, they will seek to pass any increased costs from a carbon tax uh, through to households. And they also, many of them, are the businesses that employ millions of Australians. Now, the important thing to understand uh, about the government's broken promise on the carbon tax uh, is that uh, it will make overseas polluters more competitive than even the most environmentally efficient equivalent business here in Australia. Because if you put a price on carbon mm -hmm. in Australia <coughs> through a carbon tax or an emission trading yep. scheme, uh, when our competitors in the United States and in China and India and other places don't, uh, then what you do is you will, you will make those more polluting businesses overseas more competitive uh, than equivalent businesses in Australia. And of course, that is reducing emissions mm -hmm. in Australia in a way that increases yeah. emissions by more in other parts Ken of the world. I know this morning, you were telling me about a company no, look, that's affecting WA. I, I think one of the things is the lack of detail, and that concerns everybody, because even when we've sought to seek answers through question time, we've mm. just not got them. But look, I had the brickmakers uh, industry come in and see me last session. Mm. And what they said is, they said, look, we've become highly efficient. We've converted from wood fire to gas. But our trouble is we still emit 100 tonne 100 ton of gas. Mm. Oh, sorry, uh, well, it is. It's carbon dioxide. Carbon. But the issue is, they said, that if they do that, then at $20 a tonne for 100,000 tonne of CO2, mm -hmm. that's $2 billion that the industry will have to find. And Who's the, going to pay for that? Partly, what, well, they said, look, we can't afford to pay that, so we will have to pass on those prices, which means that housing affordability becomes an issue. We'll see a downturn in housing, we'll see a downturn in jobs, and the other scenario was that we will import bricks from Malaysia. I know Louise is waiting to have her say. Uh, well, unless we <laughs> encourage these big companies to start putting things in place now to transition to a cleaner, greener way of doing things, they're going to price themselves out of the future mm. because other countries are acting, uh, they are moving on this question. You, you hear people say, oh, well, no-one overseas has acted. Um, but the whole of Europe, there are many nations mm. in that. Do you, do you have think, acted on this I, I asked you off air before, Louise, but do you think it would have been probably better for the Prime Minister to, to have retracted on the carbon tax at the moment, even though it's going to be a disaster? A, a federal loss at an election <laughs> could be a disaster even worse than the carbon tax. I was thinking. I don't maybe, I think that would be great for Australia. I was just thinking. thinking so an election loss at the next election for the Labour Party would be I great for I was thinking, Australia. you know how so many people have asked <clears> the Prime Minister about her broken promise six days before an election, she wouldn't bring in a carbon tax and she brought it in. A lot of the public has, has got, the waters are very cloudy about that and people grasp on lies and they make a big thing of it. Now, what I was thinking is if the Prime Minister wants to hold on, why doesn't she just say there's a lot of confusion about this carbon tax, let me take it off the agenda, take the confusion away, let's get back to running the country, let's get Australia back to stability with all the boat people problems and all these other issues. That's really stable. And go to an election, Louise. 
It is in the national interest to act sooner than ra rather than later. Why is that? Well, if you, if we know that a carbon, if you accept the premise that climate change is real, mm -hmm. then the globe will have to act at some point. It is more economically efficient to adjust over time than it is to have a future shock to your economy. So when the Prime Minister says we want to act on climate change, it is important that we do it now and that we put those things in place responsibly and that we help industry transition, is... we help households transition. There's really no point in waiting till later or doing a referendum or anything like that. We know we have to get the job do, done. Do you think Labor would get the referendum through? I mean, personally, do you think a refer if there was a referendum held next week, do you think that Labor would win a yes vote on that, honestly? Well, I, I'm not... Um, How do you read the public? Of, ..of a referendum, because the, what we actually need to listen to is the science and the economics of So you're saying it's good for the country. And we need to take the public with us. I would hope we would win a referendum, mm. but we've actually got to educate the public, have a dialogue with the public on this important... But, but, but when it's right. it's not just point. a There's matter a of, of doing a there, poll yeah. on, and, and saying, well, what do you yep. think? We actually need to educate people about the science and I economics agree. of this question. No, but the other we, challenge... we had some people before my yeah. Senate inquiry into the carbon tax uh, from, from Alcoa. Mm -hmm. Now, aluminium production in China is double as polluting as as in Australia. Mm -hmm. Now, but if you put a price on carbon in Australia, when China is not going to put a carbon tax in place or need TS, they will take market share. So we might reduce emissions in Australia, but emissions in China go up by more. So people in Australia have been asked to make a sacrifice for no benefit for the global environment because global emissions aren't down. You see, Australia is 1.4% <coughs> of global emissions. If we reduce emissions in Australia by 5%, but we increase them by more in other parts mm. of the world, then we've asked people in Australia to make a sacrifice for no purpose whatsoever, and that's what we've Louise, got to avoid. you don't agree with that, do you? No, we have to bring global emissions down. The globe has to act. But okay. Australia, yeah, but we're, doing, we're, doing, yeah, but we're, we're doing that in isolation, though. That's our trouble. We're not doing we it in isolation. Are we the only other country? Nations, no, no the... we're not the only okay. country. Look, we have Tell us where they're doing. Louise. Europe has acted. Big states in the US have acted. They're like China California. Is, they're looking really good. China California looks good, yeah. The simple fact is, if we don't act, then our climate is in trouble and we will have to act at some point in the but future. But you've got a significant senator. And the rest senator. of the world is watching okay. us to act. We have the high, one of the highest per capita emissions in the globe, which means do, that do there is no incentive guys? for countries well, like China to point point act it. unless Europe, we do. Can I ask both the yeah. Liberal people here, do you disagree with the facts that Louise is saying about the the emissions totals and all this. Well, we've got to act, and we've got to. We've okay, got so to you're act. saying we we've do. Got to do we, we do something effective. Yeah. We, we we've do. got to. We've got to act. So you both agree that's on effective. that? To start yeah, with. totally. But like, I mean, just to, just to put a few facts on the table, Europe, the whole eurozone, mm -hmm. which is part of an emissions mm -hmm. trading scheme, represents 14 percent of global emissions. That is 10 times as much as, as Australia. Now, and they've had an emissions trading scheme for seven years. The the proposed uh, Australian scheme would rise in three months. But the whole of Europe, ten times as many emissions, has raised in seven There's years. Also that, that just puts it into perspective. Confusion about for you. the compensation the government's offering pensioners and unemployed and low income people. There's no detail. There's, There's no, no detail. detail. It's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. Well, so it's it's promises us. Well, 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 the Prime Minister promised there will be no carbon tax before, uh, you know, under a government I leave, Louise, so we'll see. Louise, when is it all coming? Uh, tell the people at home, when uh, are we expected a price to, on carbon to be hit by the Prime Minister? announced and the compensation to be cleared up and how it's going to My work. advice is that it's in the very near future, but in clearly those, nego no, those <laughs> negotiations are taking place and I expect we'll be debating the detail of that very soon. Now, talking about debating, we're talking about the, the new makeup of the Senate as of yesterday or the 1st of um, July. Mm. We've got a new Senate where, where it involves nine Green Senators. Mm. How do you, Louise, think it's going to work for the Labor Party and Labor Government? Well, Labor's never had a majority in the Senate in its own right. So for us, I think it's business as can usual, you see the, frankly. Can you see the Greens supporting you on many issues? Well, 80% of legislation is actually passed through the uh, Parliament with the support of the opposition. Because we're very when constructive. We're, <laughs> yeah, we when we're, so the real question for me is whether my uh, Senate colleagues will, in, in the opposition, will... Stop so saying, no stop, stop, there's oppose, a... oppose, oppose, as Tony mm. Abbott's mandate has currently been. But the public are supporting just... his view, aren't they? I mean, from what I've seen of the opinion polls, it seems that it's going his way. The people are saying he's... Tony right. Abbott is holding a very bad he... government to account. What will yeah. happen in the Senate is that the government now will have a majority in the Senate with their mm. alliance partner, the Greens. Uh, so, essentially, the Senate, which has historically been a house of review, will become a rubber stamp now. But we can uh, because, already... because, I mean, no. Bob Brown will jump up and down and he will play to the gallery and, and sort of... 
know if you like, but, but ultimately he will quietly vote in favour of everything well, the government... Well, you need to, to do something fair. other you than just no, 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 scare Bob, him. You've got an agreement with Bob Brown, so he will support legislation that comes yeah, from the, the House government. of Reps and from the government. He's already flexing his muscles. Like he's, he's, he's the real he's power in the government. He's the deputy... He's the deputy, he's the deputy Prime Minister of this country at what the moment. We, what remains to be seen is whether we have a constructive opposition that's actually going to engage in these We are very constructive and we engage in all these national debates. Instead of just oppose, oppose, oppose. No, no, we don't totally you just said that 80% of legislation been. is passed through the parliament, as that it is. is totally as I'm it's assuming been, you're hoping that will continue. Not, that yeah, is as it has been over the last What I wanted to ask you, um, the makeup of the new Senate will make differences, but I've already seen cracks in the Greens' side. Mm. Well, I have to be honest, I don't think Labor's going to be giving in to everything the Greens want. Mm. This is where I see we'll a see. problem. If, for example, the Greens start saying no to a whole heap of things, what happens in the House of Reps where the, the government is there and holding on to power on a very uh, slim majority or minority government? How do you think it's... Fred, going I don't think it'll make a great deal of difference because the independents mm -hmm. fundamentally are an extension of the Labor Party. Because if you look at the votes in the House, you see yeah. very little difference in the way they move across that chamber. They and every now and again you get government. this cynical exercise that we see, and people have raised it with me. So... Have they got a ballot as to who comes? Well, Mr. To the Wilkie has said today in the media so. that he is going to. Um, he, it looks like he may not support the government any further unless the government supports him on his pokey legislation. He said and that for some that? time. He said yeah. that all the time. He's but been what happens if he decides not to? Support well, then him. we might be going back to the election, and how good would that be for Australia? I mean, like Andrew Wilkie could make a decision in the national interest here because I mean everything the government touches it stuffs up right now. So I mean it would actually be in the national interest to have an election sooner rather than later. Do you think the 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 Kevin Rudd issues have gone away. I mean, it seems to me, as a person watching the TV and, and just as a member of the public, it seems that he still uh, is a bit of a ghost then for the Labor Party. And there's been a couple of people in the Labor Party, former Labor people, saying he should disappear and retire and go away. I mean, I don't, I don't expect Louise to say, yeah, yeah, you should go, but do you think that's hurt you? I mean, obviously... I think Kevin Rudd's doing an amazing job as our foreign minister, and I can't believe that people are complaining about the fact that he's actually overseas doing his job. I was in the UN with Julia him. Julian Gillard is not complaining when uh, he's overseas. I was been a few in the UN with <laughs> yeah. him recently <laughs> he where he was job. really instrumental in uh, brokering a new UN um, statement on HIV and the global mm. epidemic of HIV. And he's a very active foreign minister and I think he's doing a fantastic job. The media may have to cover more of what he does rather than yeah. the speculation about his leadership ambitions, I suppose. But you're always going to get that. By the mere presence and the Wherever set of goes. circumstances in his removal will always mean there's going to be that speculation. And certainly people will expect Kevin Rudd at some stage to re-stamp his credentials within the Labor Party. Oh, well, Malcolm Turnbull, by this, I mean, all we're right. all having leadership debates at the moment. But I it's a med tougher, media prior. Well, you look at yeah. the recent comments about the NBN uh, of late and the disagreements between uh, Tony Abbott and Malcolm Turnbull. I think the, the, Turnbull that's another polywalk. You'll, 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 find, you'll find that uh, if, if Julia Gillard continues to poll as badly as she does and Kevin Rudd continues to poll as well as he does, I'm sure that there'll be some further discussions on the inside of the Labour Party. And it's nice to know Matthias's views are still constant. <laughs> Obviously, we can't carry on for too much longer because we're right out of time, but just to give you a final 30 seconds each. Ken, starting with you, what's happening in Parliament for you in the next few weeks? So I think the next week is going to be very interesting. Um, engaging in the legislation debates has been tremendous. Some of the private members' bills that are coming up before the House of Reps. And you're working on a few fantastic committees as well, doing some great jobs as well. Oh, look, the health and ageing, we're looking at overseas trained doctors and mm. some of the barriers and challenges they face in gaining yep. permanency within uh, the medical workforce. The other is the constitutional recognition and the consultation process in that uh, is occurring. And the four parliamentary members are working in well with the committee and we've got an open mind to Beautiful. the result. Good work. And for you, Louise, what are I'm, you doing? I'm looking forward to talking to electors about the stuff that's kicked off from the 1st of July in terms of uh, the re childcare rebates, family tax benefits. Um, Carbon tax. <laughs> <laughs> Compensation. Uh, the the uh, extra work entitlements for pensioners. There's, There's a, a lot, lot of, of really good happen. stuff that kicks in on the 1st of July. We'd love to July. have you back as well and promote some of that stuff I look as forward well. to it. And Senator Matthias Cormann? Well, I'll be uh, campaigning very hard to uh, convince colleagues about the need for genuine tax reform focused on lower, simpler and fairer taxes rather than have these ad hoc Labor Party tax grabs one after the other, the mining tax, the carbon tax, the student tax, the flat Sounds tax, like all these taxes. Can like I we've got to have genuine tax.
back to quick questions. We need please. tax. Can, just a quick question. I know we're getting wrapped too up. Too many taxes. Do you get high. to sit next to Bob Brown in the Senate? Well, he, 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 he's, he doesn't sit too far away from me. Beautiful. Okay. So you'll be able to slip him some notes. Well, actually, he might be changing side, actually. <laughs> now, apparently, he'll be sitting on the government side as of next week. <laughs> Thank you very much to Senator Matthias Corman, Senator Louise Pratt, and Federal Member for Hasluck, Mr Ken White. Thanks for being on the couch today. To Polly Waffle. Thank you. And uh, thanks for being so honest and um, giving us an insight on what you believe in politics as well. We need to take a break. Polly Waffle will be back next month again. But for now, we'll be back with more of The Couch after this.